Hello everybody, hey, welcome to the... Where are we now? But I think I'm a little bit lost. Um, oh yeah, that's right, the Epic Flight Academy. What is our topic today? The five C's and the ELT. What we're really talking about here, folks, is if we were to get lost, how do we get unlost? How do we get found? So welcome to the Flight Academy. My name is Mike Thompson. This is the Private Pilot Ground School course. Now, please remember to be successful in the course. There are three parts. We have the online course on Schoology. Number two, these videos parallel that course. And number three, please study and review this material with your flight instructor. So what about the C's and the ELT? If we're flying VFR and we're on a cross country and we start to look around in our airplane and we say, hmm, this isn't looking as familiar as it should. I'm scanning my sectional chart. I'm scanning my available resources. And I'm starting to get a little nervous. Little tiny beads of sweat are breaking out above my eyebrows and I'm not feeling really sure about this. Now is the time to admit to yourself, I'm lost! The first C in the five C's is to confess. Now, when we think about that, who am I confessing to? Am I confessing to ATC? Am I confessing to my flight instructor if I ever get found again? No. I want you to think back to the five hazardous attitudes. And one attitude that might be at play here is the macho hazardous attitude. As I'm flying along and starting to get uncomfortable, I'm thinking to myself, hey, I'm not lost, right? I'm the greatest pilot that ever lived. There's no way that I can be lost. I refuse to admit that I'm lost. I'm not going to confess to myself that I'm lost. And unfortunately, I'm going to get more and more and more lost until I get so lost, I run out of fuel, and this situation is spiraling out of control. So I have to control those hazardous attitudes. The first C of confess is confess to myself. I give myself that head slap. I go, hey, pal you are lost. And I admit to myself, I'm not real comfortable here. I think I'm lost. I don't know where I am. That's the first C. Now, once I've made that confession to myself, I can begin the procedure to get myself unlost. And you'll hear uh, different flight schools and different flight instructors talk about the C's and the five C's and the four C's and the six C's and the seven C's and all the different C's and they'll come in all different order. The first one is to confess to myself. From that point forward, there might be a variety of different C words I can employ. Let's take a look at climb, communicate, comply, conserve, and there's one not on our list here, circle. Let's take those in order. Climb. So I'm VFR, I'm in VFR weather. What's the advantage to climbing? Well, there's two main advantages. The first one is I'm going to be able to receive more radio frequencies from further distances. That'll come up in a minute on Communicate. The second major advantage is it will help me reorient my pilotage to my sectional chart. From a higher altitude, I'll see more things in a different perspective, and I might be able to just orient to my sectional chart right away and find myself. That's the advantage of climb. What about Communicate? Well, there's a lot of different ways to communicate in the airplane. If we have VFR flight following, I can just talk to the controller, tell them, hey, you know what? I'm not so sure about my position. I could communicate with a 
uh, last known frequency. Hey, I took off out of XYZ airport. I still have the approach frequency or the tower frequency. Let me try and see if I can raise somebody. If I can't, your flight instructor will review with you how to find other ATC frequencies on your chart or the chart supplement or your iPad and you communicate with them. Now, what would I say? Hmm. Recently, we did a video on the four W's. Well, can I still use the four W's if I'm lost? Sure. Remember what the four W's were? Who I'm talking to, who I am, where I am, and what I want. Well, if I dial in the frequency, I know who I'm talking to. I know who I am. That's my registration call sign. Where I am, that's what I don't know. And I will just tell them. My last known position was, and I'll tell them what that was, and I am currently unsure of my current position. Okay. And the fourth W, what do I want? Well, <laughs> hey, ATC, what do you think I want? I want you to help me get unlost. That's communicate. What about comply? Now, comply means if they give me instructions to provide assistance, well, I'm going to follow their directions. Typically, they may give you a transponder squawk code. It's highly likely and you know hopeful that they can identify you on radar. Even if they can't, you're going to communicate with them and comply with their instructions. Okay, what about circling? Now circling is not on our list, but what we mean here is as we climb up, maybe we start to just circle where we currently are. The reason for that is so that I don't become more and more and more lost. I have a last known position. And if I climb up and kind of stay in the area that may help me identify my last known position. Okay, and then finally, we see this C that says conserve. Oh, what am I conserving? You guessed it, fuel. So I might power back a little bit, lean the mixture, don't get too excited, but I can reduce power, slow down, save a little fuel, okay? Also, conserve and control my emotions. Don't panic. That's not going to help anything. All right, so those are the C's. So remember, there's not any necessarily particular order uh, except for the first one. What's the first C that I have to master my hazardous attitude? Remember what it was? It was confess. That's exactly right. I'm going to confess to myself. Then I can start my getting unlost procedures. Now, worst case scenario, worst possible case, I didn't get completely unlost or I ran out of fuel or I had an engine failure which forced me to make an off airport landing in a field somewhere. And I want to help the authorities, the U.S. Air Force, maybe the U.S. Coast Guard, the local sheriff, other aircraft. I want to help them be able to um, identify me and find my location. So wouldn't it be nice if I had some kind of a transmitter that would transmit my location in an emergency? If I had such a thing, I think I might call it Help me come up with a name here. I got it. An emergency locator transmitter. Hey, you know what we'll do? We'll call it the ELT for short. Well, guess what? That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it's called. And it is a battery powered transmitter located in your aircraft for emergencies. 
Now, you might have noticed this red switch here. This red switch is on your panel, and that is your ELT test switch. So prior to flight, you can test your ELT and make sure that your battery is working and that your ELT is working. How do we do that? Well, the way that we do that is we tune in to an emergency communication frequency. Who knows what it is? If you said 121.5 VHF, you are correct. I will tune into 121.5 on my radio and I will hit this little ELT switch and I will listen for some large sweeping sounds that come over my headset. That is the emergency locator transmitter beacon. So, what if we just had every pilot everywhere, any airport, about to head off on a cross country and we all said to ourselves, you know what, it's a good idea to check my ELT and we're all switching our ELTs on at different airports all over the state at different times. The poor Coast Guard or Air Force or local sheriff or other aircraft, <laughs> it would be kind of a confused mess. There'd be ELTs on all the time. So. There is a specific time that I can test this thing. And that is five minutes past every hour. And when I turn it on to test it over my headset by listening to 121.5, I only want to test it for three sweeps. Okay? So. No more than three audio sweeps and from the hour to no more than five minutes past the hour. Now, that ELT has to be inspected every 12 months. There is a regulation in Part 91 that talks about that ELT inspection. The regulation is 91207, and it says that ELT must be inspected every 12 calendar months. So let's hope we never need the ELT, but if we do, we know it's there, we know it's working. So folks, that is the five C's and the ELT. Let's wrap this up with a quick review question. In fact, I'll give you two review questions. What is the Part 91 regulation that talks about ELT inspection? And you got it. If you said 91207, you are correct. Second question. I have to overcome my macho hazardous attitude and admit to myself if I'm lost that, in fact, I am lost. That's the first and most important C word. Do you remember what it is? That's right. It's confess. I'm confessing to myself. Well, folks, thanks for joining us at the Epic Flight Academy. That wraps up the C's and the ELT. We will see you next time.